Thank you, everybody. If you can uh, please take your seats. We're about to continue with our program here. First of all, we just need, after those two great matches, to congratulate our four schools for a wonderful morning here, a Science Bowl. <laughs> And our middle schools, first time ever here at the National Science Bowl, really acquitted themselves beautifully. And in terms of the Science Bowl elite, you don't do any better than Thomas Jefferson and Mira Loma. Congratulations, guys. <clears throat> Before Secretary Muniz gets here, and he is on his way, we're going to take time to recognize a lot of you that have distinguished yourself over the past couple of days. First of all, the division team challenges. On Friday, all the high school teams participated in the division team challenge science activity. The number one ranked team from each of the eight divisions will receive $500 for science supplies for their schools. I'd like for the winning teams to please stand as I call your name so we can give you appropriate recognition. In the Arrhenius division from Appleton, Wisconsin, Appleton West High School. Where are you guys? <clears throat> standing over there in their green shirts. From the Bromery Division, the basis school in Scottsdale, Arizona. They're up there in peanut heaven, all right. The Curie Division's winner from North Hollywood, a former champion here on Science Bowl, North Hollywood High School. In the Darwin Division, the winner, they were not flown here, they were given Metro Fare cards. They're from Silver Spring, Maryland, Montgomery Blair High School. In the Einstein Division, all the way from Honolulu, the Iolani School. Longtime competitor here on Science Bowl. There they are. In the Fermi Division, hailing from Corpus Christi, Texas, say hello to the W.B. Ray High School. W.B. Ray. They're way up there. Nice job. The Galileo Division's winner from Edinburgh, Texas, Edinburgh North High School. Right there, nice job. And lastly, from the Hypatia Division, our winner from Plantation, Florida, American Heritage Plantation High School. Also, nice job. The middle school students also participated in an electric car competition. They designed, built, and raced model electric cars, as you all know. Competition tested engineering skills, and the students got hands-on experience with alternative fuel technology. The top three winners of the race received trophies and $500 for their school science departments at an award ceremony yesterday. And join me in congratulating the winner of Sunday's car race with a time of 6.14 seconds, the Speed Demons from Will James Middle School in Billings, Montana. <clears throat> Jen tells me that Secretary Moniz is in the house, and those of you that read the Washington Post this morning, you saw a big article about Secretary Moniz. He is a rock star. If you noticed recently, he was a guest at the White House at the state dinner with uh, Prime Minister Abe of Japan. He was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. You saw him in Luzon, Switzerland with John Kerry with the Iran nuclear negotiations. And, maybe more importantly, he threw out the first pitch at the Red Sox game. Here to introduce Secretary Moniz is Under Secretary Lynn Orr. Lynn, come on up, please. Well, good morning, everyone, and congratulations to the winning teams. 
Um, the, the teams were fantastic. I, I have to say that I'm just blown away by their knowledge and, uh, uh, and their ability to respond in very short notice. Uh, and I was glad that it was them and not me and sitting in those hot seats. Um, but I will also say that we are looking for good talent at the Department of Energy. And uh, when those uh, uh, contestants have completed their college training and maybe their PhDs, uh, then we'll be looking to hire them at the Department of Energy. So it's been a very exciting morning, and I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it's my pleasure now to just say a few words to introduce uh, Secretary of Energy Ernest Moniz, uh, to say a few words to you about um, uh, the world at large and to present the winning teams with their awards. Uh, Secretary Moniz is a nuclear physicist by training and he spent his entire career working on the tough science and energy questions of our time. Uh, as Secretary of Energy, his job is to implement the President's uh, goals of growing the economy, enhancing security and protecting the environment, um, and doing it in a way that supplies the energy we all need to live uh, our, uh, our lives. He's doing this by Im uh, implementing the President's all of the above energy strategy, which is aimed at promoting American leadership in science and clean energy technology innovation, maintaining the nuclear stockpile, and cleaning up the legacy of the Cold War. Before becoming Secretary, he was a faculty member for 30 years at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and he served as the founding director of the MIT Energy Initiative. And he also spent uh, some time as the undersecretary in the job that I have now at the Department of Energy during the Clinton administration. So needless to say, he has a very distinguished past, but believe it or not, he started out his career as a young science whiz, uh, just like all of you. So who knows where you'll be uh, in uh, a few years' time, perhaps as uh, Secretary of Energy or some other wonderfully important position. So please welcome me, uh, join me in welcoming Secretary Ernest Moniz. Well, thank you, Lynn. Um, uh, Lynn himself joined us uh, just uh, at DUE a few months ago. And from Stanford University, and uh, we're having a great time working together. But uh, I really, really appreciate being here with uh, all of you. Uh, as, uh, as Lynn said, um, I'm now, of course, the Department of Energy, uh, and uh, after uh, spending 40 years at, at MIT, my current job is pretty exciting. But the one thing I have to say uh, just can't get over is, is missing the interaction with all the students, uh, because that really was is, is, is the great part about being uh, involved in, in teaching and, and research. And, um, and I, I hope that many of you are going to have uh, the opportunity, in fact, to uh, uh, continue your careers in, in science and then ultimately be able to bring along the next, the next generation. Now, that'll, be, that'll be just uh, uh, tremendously rewarding, I can assure you. I do want to thank everybody who's made this uh, possible from our Office of Science and a whole lot of volunteers, but of course, most especially the coaches uh, and, and the students uh, who are here today who have competed so hard. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, some of you we'll be able to recognize in terms of winning the competition, but all of you uh, really winning just by being part of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, competition. I understand that uh, we've, uh, we've had about 14,000 students uh, involved in this uh, Science Bowl from uh, all 50 states. District of Columbia, uh, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, uh, so really uh, covering uh, our, our entire, uh, entire country, uh, including into the, into, the, into the Caribbean. I'll just say a few words about my own background, uh, just to say how uh, a career in science uh, can lead you in many unexpected, un unexpected ways. Uh, the, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, direction was uh, in many ways set uh, in the aftermath of the Sputnik uh, launch uh, by the Soviet Union at that time, uh, mainly because that led to a tremendous focus uh, on, uh, on improving uh, our school, uh, high school, middle school, uh, science uh, and mathematics uh, education. 
So in my case, uh, I was fortunate. I was at a public high school in, in, uh, in my hometown of Fall River, Massachusetts, and, and the, the physics instructor, Mr. Dallaire, uh, uh, immediately jumped on the chance to pioneer uh, a new approach to teaching physics. And frankly, since then, it's been just physics uh, all the way. Uh, so we all know how a teacher, in your case, teachers and coaches, I think can make an enormous, uh, um, enormous impact. Uh, I had a chance in high school, uh, this is like all ancient history for you students, but uh, in high school to visit uh, Bell Labs where a, a, a communication satellite called Telstar was under, uh, un under development uh, using solar panels to, uh, to, to power it. Uh, it was really uh, quite something. Um, uh, the, this is really the ancient history now, 3,600 solar cells for 14 watts of, of power. Uh, we've made quite some improvements uh, uh, since then, but nevertheless, that was really a tremendous, uh, uh, a tremendous uh, step forward and for me, uh, very, very exciting. And just to carry on in, this, in the space theme, maybe that inspired me uh, a few decades later then to become involved with a small company that in fact had launched uh, uh, the first X-ray satellite and discovered X-ray sources in the universe. Uh, and that company now uses that technology to make detectors that have saved the lives of many American soldiers. So we never know where this pathway goes, but just following your instincts, uh, the, uh, doing good science, uh, following the technology leads that may come from that uh, really can be uh, tremendously important for our country, but also tremendously rewarding and satisfying uh, for, for each of you. Certainly that's, that's been my, uh, my experience uh, 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 for sure. Now today, I mentioned Sputnik as kind of a, uh, what was viewed then as a, as a potential uh, major security issue for our country. Uh, today, again, we still we have many other challenges uh, that can inspire you and to which you can make huge contributions. I'll just mention one of them uh, today, the issues of climate change. Uh, climate change is a real threat uh, to, to our societies if we don't uh, really make tremendous progress in the clean energy revolution. Uh, we need new ideas, new technologies, technologies that reduce costs of things like uh, solar, uh, uh, solar energy. Uh, LED lighting is a great example of where costs have been coming down. You may see those in your, in your home now. Uh, and lots of other, other technologies. So this is an example of a tremendous need for a, a, a continuing push in, uh, in, in science and uh, technology. Uh, at, uh, at DOE, Department of Energy, uh, we, of course, pursue these. Uh, as an example, our National Renewable Laboratory uh, out near Denver uh, has, uh, over the years, had many of the world records for efficiency uh, in driving solar photovoltaics. It's the kind of very fundamental science uh, and engineering uh, that, as I said, uh, we'll need a lot of uh, to go forward over these next decades uh, to address, uh, address climate change. Another example of the kinds of things that we do that might, uh, uh, might excite you, uh, supercomputing. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, the Department of Energy has always been at the forefront of developing supercomputers. Right now, we are working to develop for the next decade, maybe you'll be some of the first users, what are called exascale capabilities, 10 to the 18th operations per second, and that will allow tremendous effort in all fields of science and engineering, including things like inventing new materials uh, that will have uh, a, a multiplicity of, 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 uh, of applications. So anyway, these, that's just a little bit of a flavor. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, I've been at this, as was said, for over 40 years, and, uh, and uh, one never stops having fun uh, and, and, uh, and marveling, really, uh, at the advances uh, that are possible uh, through science and, and, and technology. And of course, that's in turn only possible uh, if we keep the talent coming, the pipeline, and that's what uh, all of you uh, represent. Uh, so we are, we, are, we are counting on you. Uh, I'm hoping that some of you will, will be part of our Department of Energy laboratories, helping make those, uh, those uh, tremendous breakthroughs 
that can solve our climate challenges, among, uh, among many, uh, uh, many, many others. So um, uh, that's just really a little bit of a flavor of certainly where I come from and of the excitement uh, that I have seen uh, over a number of decades of, of pursuing, uh, pursuing science. Uh, again, I want to congratulate uh, all of you uh, for uh, reaching uh, this, uh, these finals. And I think with that, we're going to move forward and kind of get the winners up here. Yeah. Would you answer a few questions from the students? Sure. All right. Sure. We're not going to let the secretary get away quite yet. You've been asking, you've been asked questions now for the past couple of days. Now it is your chance to ask a secretary a question that's been burning. We have three microphones out there in the audience. If you have a question for Secretary Moniz, would you make your way toward that microphone? We'd like to hear from you. It is hard to see. Can we see where the microphones are? We have one right in the back there. And uh, young man, would you be uh, good enough to uh, identify yourself and uh, ask your question? Yeah, uh, I'm Fabian Mack. I'm coach for Westview High School from Portland, Oregon. And I had recently seen um, an unveiling of the Tesla Powerwall by Elon Musk. And in my opinion, I think it's absolutely revolutionary. It could replace, you know, all the problems, or it, it tackles all the problems with solar power, you know, cycling during the day and all that. And I was wondering if it's something that would need to be governmentally handled or maybe thrown into open market, or what do you think? Great. Uh, yeah, that that's, uh, was a very exciting announcement uh, last week. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what, uh, what it was, so Tesla, of course, famous for the, uh, for the Tesla uh, uh, automobile, the S-car, the electric, electric car, pretty spiffy electric car. Uh, last week, they announced also a, a home uh, battery uh, option. Uh, uh, for example, 10 kilowatt hours of, of, of storage. And uh, the question really comes as to, uh, I think, a, a, what might this do uh, let's say for a, for a consumer, uh, and B, the question that was asked, to what extent it, would the government be involved? Let me just note that uh, the, the government, the Department of Energy, uh, was very involved uh, in, hel in helping Tesla reach this point. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the department extended to them a $500 million, roughly, uh, loan guarantee to get them going. Uh, they proved to be very successful. They paid back the loan nine years early, and now we think that they're going to be off on their own trajectory uh, without our further help. Uh, that was on the auto side. Now on the home battery, let me just say a few things as to uh, what a having a home battery, an affordable home battery system uh, can do for you, because it's quite a few things. For one thing, uh, of course, it can just be backup power, so that if the grid goes out, uh, you can keep uh, essential functioning in your house uh, uh, to, uh, to carry on. But you can do more things. Another thing you might do, if you live in a place uh, where you pay for electricity according to what it really costs uh, the, the producers, so for example, at night when there's very little being used, electricity is very cheap in reality. Uh, during the peak uh, early evening hours, it's much more expensive. Now, in some places, of course, we just pay a flat rate. But as we go to paying appropriately, well, if you have a battery, you can charge it up at night when it's cheap and use it in the early evening when it's expensive. So you can, you can earn back uh, much of the cost, at least, of that, of that battery. And a third area, the one that was mentioned, is that uh, as we see an increase in, uh, let's say, rooftop solar generation, well, of course, the sun uh, may not be out um, uh, in full force at the time you want to use it, uh, use the electricity, uh, because, uh, for example, you might be at work uh, at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So if you have, like, 10 kilowatt hours, you can, again, charge up that battery 
uh, during the uh, during the afternoon and then take advantage of that solar power uh, in, in the evening. So there's multiple uh, opportunities for applying this kind of technology. Uh, I think uh, many were surprised at how low the cost was uh, for the battery uh, that Tesla is putting out. Although I will say that this is another example where we need more science and technology to get that cost down uh, even more so that it can become very, very widespread and then having every home, you know, in some, in the future perhaps with distributed energy storage would be a big, a big revolution in how we use energy and it can encourage much more solar energy. That's a great question. Great question. Thank you. We have a young man over here. Could you identify yourself, please, and uh, ask the question of the secretary? Hi, I'm Jacob Myers. I'm a sophomore, and it was mentioned earlier that you were involved in the Iranian nuclear negotiations, so I'd like to ask what role you think science has to play in foreign policy and what those negotiations were like. Okay, I certainly was and frankly still am uh, involved in those uh, negotiations uh, and uh, it may be surprising to some, I, well, you know, maybe, I can assure you it's surprising to some to, uh, to hear why is the Secretary of Energy uh, involved in these Iran negotiations. It goes back to the theme of my remarks and then I'll come back to answer the second part of your question. The, um, the Department of Energy really is the place, especially in our national laboratories, uh, where the core of nuclear science and technology resides in this country. It's something that, uh, that uh, we, we've been doing for decades, and it's the kind of thing that often is done maybe below the radar, uh, but this Iran negotiation has certainly uh, brought it into full view. And it's really based upon the fact that we maintain always maintain really talented people who understand all aspects of nuclear science and technology. So along comes the Iran negotiation, a very important one uh, for regional and global uh, security. Uh, and it's highly technical in terms of what we need to negotiate. Uh, without getting into the details, although I can do so if you have an hour. Uh, you know, it involves centrifuges and uranium stockpiles and nuclear reactors, and all of these things have to be traded off. So basically, uh, uh, my role was to work with the head of Iran's nuclear organization uh, to see how we could make all these trade offs so that uh, we could accomplish our negotiating uh, objective uh, in terms of. Uh, making sure uh, that making sure that we could verify uh, that Iran, if it chose to pursue a nuclear weapon, uh, could not do so without our knowing in sufficient time to uh, to to react. Now, how did I do that? I wasn't sitting there with a slide rule or calculator to use old-fashioned tools or a computer uh, doing my own calculations. So what it meant was quite literally every day calling back having our laboratory experts on call uh, and having them run through complex calculations uh, quite literally every day for about six weeks uh, so that we could, we could reach, reach a, what we think uh, at least is tentatively, uh, a very, very strong agreement. We could not do that without relying upon, again, having the scientific human capacity uh, to, to do those analyses and to do them quickly and reliably. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for that question. If science doesn't work out, young man, you'd be a good reporter. I like that. <laughs> At this time, we're going to ask the secretary to stay up here on stage, and we're going to recognize our winning teams. So when we call your names, would you please come on up? We'll have a presentation and a photo op with the secretary. This is what we've been waiting for, the culmination of the National Science Bowl of 2015. You know, the 16 middle schools that advanced to double elimination on Saturday 
are going to receive $1,000 for their school science departments. The top three teams will receive a trophy, individual medals, and certificates. Join me now in congratulating the third place team, Academy for Science and Design from Nashua, New Hampshire. <clears throat> Joining Secretary Meniz is Under Secretary Orr. Nicely done. Nicely done. You can take that giant check with you. Next coming to the stage, we witnessed them this morning, a great group of competitors. Their name for, the school was named for Roberto Clemente. I remember watching him play in Pittsburgh, where I'm from when I was a kid. He was a role model for many, and Roberto Clemente would be very proud of this team. Our second place winner, Roberto Clemente Middle School from Germantown, Maryland. Come on up. <clears throat> Congratulations. The trophy, the $1,000, and individual medals for each of these winners. And all here for the very first time. What a debut performance. Roberto Clemente Middle School. And now, also here for the very first time, first among all 48 middle schools from Sugar Land, Texas, please welcome Fort Settlement Middle School, our winner, Middle School 2015. There's a high school here from Sugar Land, Dulles High School, and I asked the guys if they were going to go to Dulles, and they said, no, we're going to the rival school, and we're going to beat them, and we'll be back next year. That's the kind of competitive spirit these guys have. Congratulations. Look at the smiles. Nicely done, everybody. And now we move on to our high schools. We changed the color of our science ball shirts. The top 16 high schools will receive $1,000 for their school science departments. The top three teams will also receive a trophy, individual medals, and certificates. Join me now in congratulating the third place team. Remember, we had 68 schools. These were the top three the third place team from Storrs, Connecticut, Edwin O. Smith High School. Come on up, please. <clears throat> Check the trophy. Good looking group. Nicely done, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> Next coming to the stage is a school that has made this trip many times before. In fact, the coach of the team for 22 years, Sharon Webb, is sitting out here right now. She is so proud of this school. She now works for DOE. She volunteers. She's an Einstein fellow. She is so proud of this team, as are we. Thomas Jefferson will be going on a five-day science trip to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. 
including a fully guided adventure tour of Great Salt Lake Park, Yellowstone, and Grand Teton. Many adventures await them, including seeing Old Faithful hiking the Continental Divide and taking a boat trip down the Snake River. We'd all like to go with you. Please welcome our second place team. What a game they had. Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Here they are. Their very proud coach, Mary Ann Doherty, joining them. Proud representatives of what is arguably the top science school in the Washington metropolitan area, and you can see why, because of their performance this morning. Congratulations. <laughs> and speaking of a well-worn path up to the stage here at the National Science Bowl, Today's winning team, Coach Hill told me, have actually made eight trips up here. They came in third once, second twice, and now first place five times more than any other high school in our history. One-fifth of the championships belong to this school. They are going to get $1,000, a trophy, medals, certificates, a banner for the school, the river they're going to take a nine-day science trip to Alaska. They'll be exploring the Cooper River Delta, and I think you've been to Alaska before even. It sounds like you might be going back. <laughs> Prize stocks and prolific runs of wild salmon, the mystical appeal of old growth, hemlock and spruce, hiking through the Chugach National Forest. They're going to whitewater raft on the Sheridan River and travel across Prince William Sound and the Orca Inlet, home to the world's largest population of sea otters. They are the pride of Sacramento and the pride of the National Science Bowl. Mira Loma, Sacramento, California. Very proud Coach Hill there with the team for 16 years. Tough final match there, and they never flagged, they never gave up. The spirit of a true champion, Mira Loma High School. Well done, guys. And we're bringing back out Fort Settlement, our middle school winner for the middle school division for a joint picture. Come on back out, Fort Settlement. <laughs> They're going to look at this picture later and say, who was the guy in the green shoes? <laughs> They're looking good. They're looking good. <laughs> Someone commented on my socks, so I had to say something about the shoes. <laughs> Our winners, Mira Loma and Ford Settlement. What a group. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> and before we dismiss, and you've been a wonderful audience here this morning, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize not just Coach Hill and Coach Webb and all the other coaches. Would we have all the coaches, please? We haven't recognized you. Would you all stand so we can tell you how much we appreciate what you've done? All of the coaches. Wow.
Our thanks to all the coaches and all the volunteers in the Department of Energy for what they've done here. And I just hope you've all had a good time and that you'll always remember this and that you'll come back as a competitor or as an alum to help out in the future. I'm going to turn this over to Jan. And Jan, you're going to be giving dismissal? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much.